I'm always looking for imagery that puts Canada at the forefront. I'm Charles Pachter. I'm a Toronto artist, born here in the middle of the Second World War in 1942. So with each decade, I moved on to a different approach and a different style. Started out with very expressionist images. I was working with lithographs on stone. And it wasn't until I got out to Calgary that I started to think about Canada and got into pop images of Canadian subjects. And in those years, Canadian art magazines were filled with images by American pop artists. We were brought up to believe that if it came from here, it was inconsequential. Came back to Toronto in the 70s, and of course, the Queen on the Moose. That was in the early 70s. By the late 70s, I took the Queen off the Moose and started doing just the Moose by himself, and went on to do all these images of Moose jumping off cliffs and Moose peering out over choppy lake, kind of puns on the group of seven. And then I started doing portraits, painted Margaret Atwood in 1980, and many other well-known Canadians. I did a whole series of people sitting at my table in my former studio around the corner. But painting is what sustains me, what keeps me from being depressed. The woes of the world seem to vanish for me when I'm in the studio. The studio is my sanctuary. And when I'm painting, I feel high, I feel excited, I feel glad to be alive. Every once in a while when I'm not up for painting, I get fidgety and nervous. But the minute I get back into the studio, I feel happy again. I'm turning the big 8-0 in six months, and it's a pretty special time for me. Uh, having spent 60 years of my career painting, it's pretty exciting to see the best pieces being put up for auction in June. Looking forward to that with great uh, expectations. I began painting barns back in the late 80s. I had a farm up in Oral Medonte, just in between Barry and Aurelia. And then in April, the fields would actually flood, so it looked like a lake. And I did this one image of a barn reflecting. And then I started to look at the barn as this sort of primal, simple bit of architecture that uh, looked so eloquent as I took the whole concept and reduced it to its simplest, purest form. I was in my 20s in 1965 when the new Canadian flag was proclaimed on Parliament Hill. Fifteen years later, in 1980, I began to think about commemorating the adoption of the new flag and I bought a flag and stuck it in a fence post hole and watched it moving in the wind and I was struck by how beautiful it looked under the influence of wind and light and it began a whole new series for me where I just took the image and did all these various alterations of it uh, and I never looked back. I just loved painting it. I had such a good time doing it. The large tent painting behind me on the left was called the Canvas House. I used two forms reminiscent of the bars on the Canadian flag to surround the tent as this first primal shelter. The second one, again, I, re I kept reducing to the purest form of the triangle and I called it to all intents, another one of my Pactor puns. And then the third one was going back to a memory of looking out at the forest from inside an orange tent. In many ways, the tents are the offspring of my barn paintings. They have that same rigorous reduction to a simple form. And I became fascinated by composing the triangle from the tent in different ways. I remembered the expression monarchs of the north in school that referred to the moose. I had this special moment where I perched the queen atop a moose sitting side saddle and did a painting of her called Noblesse Oblige. My dealer at the time took one look at these new paintings and refused to show them. He said, I, I can't show these and I don't have to tell you why. 
whole series of the flower paintings came about as a result of the pandemic. For two years, I painted flowers that I had grown in my gardens up in Aurelia. It was something of a blessing in disguise because it kept me busy thinking about simple, beautiful form and color at a time when the world's woes were overwhelming everybody. Turning 80, I feel seriously grateful that I'm still moving along with a lot of energy. And I'm not really 80, I'm 60 US. And the beautiful thing about coming to this stage in my life is that you don't really worry about what anybody else thinks anymore. You do what works for you. You find your center, you find your raison d'etre, your reason for being, and you just keep going with gratitude that uh, you're able to do it. And uh, in my case, I just feel like a really lucky guy.